Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So today, since it's really crappy weather outside, I'm just cleaning out the freezer and I'm going to be doing some Euro mounts on this six point that I shot last season. I don't know if you guys remember that one. And I also have an eight point and if you want to see those videos, uh, you can click these links right up here. Uh, Don't forget, as we're heading back into deer season, some of you guys might be needing yourself a tree stand. And if you're one of those people, remember that we are giving away a free Summit Viper SD tree stand. And you can win it for free. And all you have to do is subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. And you can click this video right here to see the rest of the rules. So I went to Walmart this morning and picked up all the stuff that I'm going to need. And this is really easy to do and you should be able to do it uh, in any kitchen. So the main thing that you need is a big pot that you can boil them in. And I just picked this one up at Walmart, it was like 20 bucks. And then you're gonna need a whole bunch of hydrogen peroxide. If you don't wanna spend that much money on hydrogen peroxide, you don't wanna waste it all. There's another trick which uh, I'll show you later on where you can use a lot less of this stuff um, and still submerge the entire head. So the first thing I gotta do, I'm gonna go outside and sit in the rain and I'm actually gonna flesh out uh, these these skulls and get the capes off. Alright, so these have been sitting in this tub of water for a little while and uh, this eight point is uh, nice and defrosted so I'm going to start with that one. The other one still needs a little bit of time. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you how to uh, how to take the cape off. So I'm going to use a little scalpel to do this just because I have them and also <clears throat> I don't like to see a cape go to waste and um, I put a post up on Facebook uh, that I was doing this today and that if any taxidermists wanted um, the cape, you know, because sometimes a taxidermist uh, will get a, a deer sent to them or given to them that doesn't uh, have a good cape, it's got a nick in it, it's got a piece missing or whatever. For whatever reason, sometimes they need to substitute in a different cape. So these can be quite valuable to them. Um, so I always like to give them to people if I'm, if I'm just going to do a Euro mount. So in order for them to use them, you want to not screw up the cape so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut uh, from in between the antlers here and a T to the antlers. And I'm going to cut down the back of the neck here because they can stitch that right back up again. And most mounts being that they're pedestal mounts, or, or sorry, um, uh, shoulder mounts, they're going to be up high against the wall, and you won't be able to see uh, that line that I'm going to cut. So, I'm going to make that slit um, and just start working my way through this. So, again, cut this little Y to the base of the antlers, and I'm going to start by opening this a little bit more. Start by working my way to the base of the ears. And once you reach the base of the ears, just start hacking your way through them. It's all cartilage, pretty easy to cut through. So once you get down 
to where you cut off the neck, you kind of start to flip it inside out. And that's how you're going to get the head out, or sorry, the, yeah, how you're going to get the head out of the skin and the antlers too. So just keep working your way down, cutting the skin, pulling and cutting. trick again with the screwdriver you just stick it in under the skin and just you're gonna start going around the base of the antler and pulling there we go it actually peels it right out pretty easily well, well not really easily but a lot easier than doing it the long way where you have to cut it loose. So once you get past that part, you have the antlers off, it's really just pretty easy from there. Just gotta be careful around the eyes, that's like the last part that is tricky. Alright guys, so I just finished fleshing out these bucks, so here's the 8 point, and here is the 6 point. I'm going to start out with the 8 point just because it's been defrosted a little bit longer. And the first thing you're going to do is figure out how it's going to fit into your pot. So, this one actually sits, that's all the way on the bottom, so it's actually a pretty good uh, position. The only thing is, it tips from side to side, and I want it to stay nice and even because I want the water level to be, you know, right at the base um, of the antlers because I don't want the antlers to be in the water. So what I'm going to do is take this got a two by six that I had laying around and a little piece, a little strip of like one by four. And if I put that in there, it keeps everything nice and balanced. So when I'm boiling, it won't tip over and start boiling the antlers. So first, we're gonna go through two cycles of boiling it, and I'm gonna use one of these dish tablets, um, and this is gonna break down a lot of the oils that come out of the fat when it's boiling. It's important that you use dishwasher soap, not the kind that you would use to do your dishes in the sink. The stuff that goes in a dishwasher is like foamless, bubbleless, so it won't uh, spill over. All right, so now we're just gonna fill it up. And you can do this with hot water just to speed up the process. We're going to fill it up approximately uh, to just underneath the, uh, the bases of the antlers. Once you've got it positioned in the pot how you want it to be, uh, move it over to the stove and crank it on high. And just get it to a light boil and then you're just going to let it simmer for about 30 to 45 minutes. And there are, of course, other ways that you can do this. I've heard of people burying the skulls and letting the microbes in the dirt take care of it, 
or even putting them in a bucket of water and just letting it rot for a couple months. Both of those didn't seem like the best way to do it, but if you've done the other methods, uh, please let us know how your results were, uh, and I may do a video in the future trying those out as well. But for the time being, I feel like the boiling method does the trick really well. And as you can see, I've done it on a number of different skulls, including this little guy right here. That's one of my favorites. Check out the teeth on this little sucker. If you have any guesses to what this animal might be, drop a comment down below. I'm curious to see what you guys think it is. All right, guys, so this head has been boiling for about 45 minutes now. Um, I'm going to take it out and uh, start picking off as much of the meat as I can. All right, so here it is. Now, a lot of people always tell you you should cut off as much of the meat as you can before you boil it because it's going to make it easier, but I disagree. See, instead of having to cut the jaw off, I just pull it right off. Just giving it a rinse with cold water so I can actually handle it. And most of the tendons and stuff sort of become this like gelatinous thing. So just use your nails and start scraping off as much of this stuff as you can. And grabbing a hold of like all these bigger pieces of meat. Just pulling as much out as you can. So in the nasal cavity, it's mostly cartilage. If you grab it with the pliers, you can pull the majority of it out. And then use a hose or just your tap to rinse it out as much as you can. So to get the brain out of the, the skull, you can go in from the back here, from the like brain stem, and I just take a screwdriver in there and just mash it up into little pieces and smush it. And just kind of scrape the walls as best as you can, and then when you run a hose through it, the majority of it will come out. There's these two nodules that are kind of hidden under this flesh here. There's one right there, and there's one right here. They're like made of some porous material. I don't know really exactly what the purpose of them is. But if you take some pliers, grab a hold of them, and kind of break them off. Like that. See, they're weird. They're like hollow. You take those off, and that gives you another access point to the inside of the brain cavity. Alright, so now that most of the meat is off of this thing, it's ready to go back in the boil for a short boil, and it'll get the majority of the remainder off. <clears throat> The other skull is starting to get there, so I'm just going to give it a once over with a brush. This is just an old dish brush. But this helps get like all the little bits of fat and stuff like that that get stuck in the cracks. You can give it a good scrub down and get all that stuff off. Alright, so I put this one back in the pot, boiled it for another 15 to 20 minutes, and uh, that really got the rest of it very loose so I picked it all off cut it all off and as you can see there's hardly any meat left on here uh, which means that it's just about ready to go into the peroxide boil but before I do that I just want to take care of any oils and grease that are on it so I'm gonna give it a light dressing of Dawn dish soap and I'm gonna scrub the crap out of it Get up in the cracks as much as you can. Alright, so as I mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that these antlers stay nice and dark. 
but that the skull gets nice and white. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some saran wrap. If I don't throw it all on the floor, I'm going to wrap it around the base of the antlers. that they are protected when it is in the boil. Like that. Now I only bought six of these things of peroxide and you can get a whole bunch more and fill this thing all the way up and that's fine. But I learned a cool trick. Take the trash bag, put the skull into the trash bag you put the skull in here, put water on the outside to the level you want it, put the peroxide on the inside, and it basically uh, surrounds it with peroxide, and when you boil it, it boils through the bag, and you can use a lot less peroxide. So, I'm going to pour in three of these. Make sure you pour it not on the antlers. Now we're going to put water around the outside. And you just want to keep an eye on the inside of the trash bag because the water level will start to rise up as uh, you fill the outside with water. And then you just want to stop it right when it gets to below the antlers and then it's ready to go on the stove again. Alright, so this skull has been in the peroxide for about half an hour and it's looking pretty good. Don't let it go for too long because it'll look like it's not completely white but once it dries out, I don't know why, but it gets whiter. So uh, I think it's good after a half hour. So I'm going to pull this out and show you guys what it looks like. So, oop, there it is, nice and white. So I'm gonna get saran wrap off as quick as I can. Give that a solid rinse. There's the result for now, looking pretty good. And um, I'm gonna let that sit overnight and then I will show the result when it's dried out. So there you have it. These are the two deer heads that I just did. And uh, I'm really happy with how they look. And I'm actually gonna be using these to make some lamps. And I'm gonna make a different video about that in a few weeks once I figure out exactly how I'm gonna do that. But um, I just wanted a cool way to display them that's actually useful, so lamps seem like a great idea. Uh, if you guys end up trying this out on your own deer head, make sure you send us a picture of your results and we'll post it on our Instagram. You guys may have noticed that we're about to hit 3,000 subscribers, which is just absolutely crazy. And honestly, none of it would be possible if it wasn't for you guys that have subscribed to our channel and been supporting us from the beginning. And for that, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Seriously, we really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, Now's a great time to do so. As we mentioned, we got a bunch of cool videos coming up, including how I'm gonna turn these skulls into lamps, as well as a bunch of scouting videos and other DIY projects that we've been working on. So thank you for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.